think a lot of my work is inspired by my history growing up, my love of color and art history itself. My parents were fashion designers, and so growing up, we had many, many fashion magazines in the house from Paris and Italy, and we did a lot of celebrating with a lot of food and a lot of creativity. It was a really easy place to engage in learning things about painting and color and experimenting. My great-grandparents came from Italy, from the Campania region, Avellino, and Rome. And my mother's family, her parents, came from Beirut and Sagbin in Lebanon. When I look at art history, I trace this idea of the female goddess, Asarte, Inanna Ishtar, who are from the Middle East, and they're traveling across to Greece and to Italy to become Aphrodite, and then to Venus, and our overall idea about the female divinity. Venus herself is giving a gift. She's with the three muses, but her earthly devotee cannot see her. She's blind to her eyes, but she still awaits the gift because she believes in sacred love. So I like to combine different artworks together to create an idea as well. In particular, this group of paintings, this is an Indian painting from circa 1790, Banarshi Rajini from the Rajas, and it's a female, she's waiting quietly for her lover, occupying herself. This is a cinnabar red carved lacquer dish from 1279 from the Yuan Dynasty. And this one on the right is a portrait of a prince from the late 17th century. It's a mogul style painting and you see the beautiful green malachite field. He holds a flower. Now that is an archetype, these are archetypes, but I combined them to create another piece. This would be, the, for me, the prince approaching his lover and she's waiting patiently for him. And when they come together in the garden, true love comes. So the red rose, the red flower, creates this idea of, an idea of true love. This particular painting actually is the prince, the prince of coaches. And I use things like cinnabar, bee pollen, bee pollen. 22 karat gold leaf, lapis lazuli, and the green of the malachite field. And it's as if the prince is walking with the flower, so it's abstraction of the prince. It's just his flower moving in the garden. And as he moves towards her, he sees in his mind's eye, which is, which is the lapis lazuli, the remembrance of their kiss. And this is made with this Chanel passion lipstick. There's an actual kiss. So I like to kind of play with the senses um, and these ideas with um, pigments that have certain kinds of quality to them, especially these natural pigments. They, cut, they radiate a certain kind of feeling to them. They have life in them. And so I love to work with historical pigments, but I play with eyeshadows as well, lipsticks, gold leaves, metal leaves, oxidizing copper, seawater, seashells, etc. So this painting is a magic square. It's based on the idea of red, yellow, and blue. And I got that idea from an Ellsworth Kelly painting, Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue? But I really wanted to do something very spiritual. And I saw this Buddhist painting in indigo and gold at the Gold and Silver Show in Japan at the Tokyo National Museum when I was there. And that inspired me to make this painting. So here, the most complex, which includes everything, the gold, the red of fire, 
the gold representing a spiritual life and indigo root representing space. This is my new body of work. It's called Cosmic Fire. And I got my inspiration from fire paintings, but also from the idea of this kind of explosion of fire that is regenerative. Part of the materials that I use, I use encaustic, I use gold leaf, silver leaf, oxidizing copper leaf, and I also incorporate cosmetics, makeup. Sometimes I get my inspiration for colors from makeup itself. I think of them as a star dying, a supernova, all the elements then bursting out and creating all the elements that represent the matter of things. But I also see it not as an internal thing, like the passion in the belly or like a volcano in the earth. So I see the relative idea of fire both as a personal expression of regeneration and of transformation um, that's reflected also in the outside world of nature. The fabric of nature kind of comes from that idea of like a swatch of fabric being part of a larger expansion of nature itself and so a lot of times I'll work with squares and I have this idea of something that is beautiful and colorful but it's really a piece of nature.